Good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us for the Wilmot Township Council meeting of Monday, January 17th, 2022. At this time, I would like to remind everyone that with today's winter snowstorm, make sure you check on any vulnerable neighbors, help with some shoveling, and most importantly, stay home if you can. I would also like to thank our township staff that have been working tirelessly to clear the roads and keep everyone safe. Remember to move your cars off the street so they can safely get around. Thank you. And uh, ask Councillor Fenning to read the territorial acknowledgement, please. We have gathered in Wilmot Township on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee and Mississauga peoples. We also want to acknowledge the importance of the Dish with One Spoon Covenant, a peace agreement made between Indigenous nations before the Europeans arrived. It characterizes our collective responsibility to each other and Mother Earth. We should take only what we need, leave enough for others, and keep the dish clean. By acknowledging this covenant with the First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples, we are reminded of our important connection to this land where we live, learn, and work together as a community. Thank you. And we have an addition to the agenda. The clerk, please read the recommendation. That uh, bylaw number 2022-05, interim tax, bylaw, tax levy bylaw, be added to the agenda as item number 14.3 under bylaws. Thank you. We have a mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Gerber, seconded by Councillor Hallman. All in favor? Thank you. That is carried. I'd like to uh, adoption of the agenda. Madam Clerk. That the agenda as presented for January 17th, 2022 be adopted as amended. Is there a mover and a seconder for that? Councillor Holland, Councillor Fenning. All in favor? That's carried, thank you. The minutes of the previous meeting, meetings, Madam Clerk. Thank you, uh, that the minutes of the following meetings be adopted as presented. Regular council meeting, December 6, 2021. Special council meeting, January 4th, 2022. And special council meeting, January 10th, 2022. Thank you, I have a mover and a seconder. Move by Councillor Fisher, second by Councillor Hallman. Are there any questions or edits from Council? Councillor Gerber. Yeah, thank you, through you, Mayor Armstrong. Just a, just a minor point, I think I noticed on page 41 of the agenda package, which would be page four of the January 4th minutes, um, there's a reference to the MZR process. I think that should read the MCR process. I think it's just uh, when you're hearing the audio and you've got MZO in the brain and MCRs. And so I just wanted to clarify that I think they're referring to the MCR process there rather than an MZR process. Like I said, that was page 41 of the agenda package, page four of the January 4th meeting minutes. Probably cleared everyone, but just thought I'd make sure we, we were. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Guru. Yes, it's uh, uh, probably either a typo or, as you said, uh, hearing it incorrectly by mistake. Okay, so that is so noted. Councillor Gerber? Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor Armstrong. Through you. Yeah, just one other, um, and again, just this, again, it may be a semantic thing or just a cut and paste thing. For a couple of the motions, it said carried, defeated, defeated, carried unanimously, defeated. Um, so I was just wondering, I mean, I know the one motion about the meeting dates, we were sort of talking about the dates a lot, but I, I, did, I just didn't think at any one time we had that many sort of things in a row. So to, like I said, it, it, it was on 
the, the motion where we were setting the dates for subsequent MZO meetings, and then several other motions as well said carried, defeated, defeated, carried unanimously, defeated unanimously. I just thought it would probably just read carried or defeated. But like I said, it's probably just a cut and paste thing where it fit in one place. And so I just thought I'd clarify that as well. Thanks. So if I, if I may, uh, Mayor Armstrong, uh, thank you. So the deputy clerk and myself are learning a new uh, agenda and meeting management software. And uh, this was the first time we had ever produced minutes in that software and the uh, editing and the review of them. Oh yeah, now I see it. Um, my apologies, I, I was away. Um, somebody else edited it, I'm not sure who it was, but uh, that was for uh, whatever reason missed and my apologies for that. Um, my recollection of the meetings is that they were all carried. <laughs> we will make the corrections in the minutes accordingly. And uh, thank you for pointing out the, uh, the errors. Okay, thank you. All in favor? That is carried, thank you. We have no public meetings and we have a presentation. I'm gonna call on Mr. Okraka to introduce his report and, and Ms. Cody. Thank you, Mayor Armstrong. The report highlights uh, the ongoing partnership between the Township of Wilmot, the Region of Waterloo and the University of Waterloo um, to identify cultural heritage landscapes of significance in Wilmot Township. Uh, the project's been going on for some time. The last update that was provided to Council and the community was in May of 2021. We're very happy uh, to have Bridget Cody from the Region of Waterloo here tonight to update us once again as a community on the status and progress of the ongoing study. Welcome, Bridget. Thank you, Mayor Armstrong, Beaumont Council, for inviting me here tonight. Just gonna exit the full screen so I can see my notes while I speak to you. As Harold mentioned, my name is Bridget Cody. I'm a cultural heritage principal planner at the region of Waterloo. And in partnership with the Township of Wilmot, we've retained the University of Waterloo Heritage Resources Center to undertake a study to identify cultural heritage landscapes in Wilmot and North Dumfries townships. The consultant of this study, Chris Gear, as mentioned previously, has presented to Wilma in the past. But as a recap, the purpose of this study is to identify landscapes within the township that meet the criteria of for heritage significance. This study will provide the necessary information for the township to consider future conservation measures of these landscapes, such as designation, design guidelines, or commemoration. Uh, next slide, please. So what has been accomplished so far? Over the spring and summer of 2021, researchers with the Heritage Resources Centre have collected data from community members via the Engage Region of Waterloo website. The study has its own project webpage there. Through individual, both virtual and telephone interviews with community members, and via virtual meetings with heritage committees, such as Heritage Wilmont and the region's Heritage Planning Advisory Committee. Next slide, please. While engaging with the community, the project has experienced some limitations. Meeting face-to-face -face with community members or focus groups was not possible due to public health COVID measures. And subsequently, meaningful engagement has been a struggle, whether it be because of uh, screen time burnout or survey burnout by participants, um, a lack of geographic literacy or, or a difficulty in the public orienting themselves on a two-dimensional map and describing a geographic location accurately, or perhaps uh, technology literacy. Um, the study asked participants to draw polygons on a map of their computer on their computer using GIS software. Compared to in the past, participants would have been asked to draw and brainstorm around a paper map in a focus group. And finally, the fact that cultural heritage landscapes are an abstract concept in and of themselves. So the study did not receive as much participation as we originally hoped for. Next slide. 
Nonetheless, researchers were able to develop a list of a draft list of potential cultural heritage landscapes as suggested by community members. And the following slides will represent each landscape. Researchers will evaluate each of these potential landscapes to, to determine if they meet the criteria for heritage significance and identification as a cultural heritage landscape. So next slide. So we've got Phillipsburg. Next slide. The Huron Road through Wilmot Township. Next slide. New Dundee. Next slide. The Baden Hills. Next slide. St. Agatha. Next slide. Downtown New Hamburg. Next slide. And finally, Baden. Other landscape suggestions from the community included the Hydro Cut, the Wilmot Line, and the Wilmot Rod and Gun Club. Next slide, please. So the next steps will involve an early draft that will be reviewed by Wilmot and regional staff in late winter, early spring of 2022. A final draft of the report will then be presented to Wilmot Council in late March, early April for information which will allow Heritage Wilmont, as well as the region's Heritage Planning Advisory Committee to review and provide the draft, um, provide comments on the draft. And then finally, the report, the final report will be presented to Wilmot Council in late spring 2022. Next slide. So I'd like to thank you again for the opportunity to provide this uh, progress update on the Culture Heritage Landscape Study. If you'd like more information, or if you would like to provide feedback to the researcher or myself, um, a link to the study webpage is found on this slide, as well as our contact information. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. Well, first I'll ask the clerk to read the uh, recommendation, then I'll ask council for any questions or they have. The report DS 2022-002 be received for information. And that is would be moved by Councillor Fenning and Councillor Fisher. Okay. So any we start off with Councillor Hallman. Thank you, Ms. Cody, for your uh, presentation to us this evening. Um, connecting with members of the Indigenous community over the weekend about this report um, brings me to this discussion with um, some feedback. So uh, through Wilmot, we have committed to um, more equity, diversity and inclusion. And members of the Indigenous community have felt hesitant about reaching out to Wilmot staff or other members of Wilmot Council just because of the ongoing tension and relationships that are, are happening in our community. One of the things that they wanted me to bring to your attention was that they felt that the things that were presented this evening were very heavily focused on settlers. And so one of the things that they'd asked me to uh, present to you was um, the Miramictic Lake at Sunfish Lake is um, rather important to the community and Canada, as there are only 10 in Canada and um, not many more than that on the entire planet. Um, so the Indigenous community found this to be uh, something that you know, is a, a land-based feature that we all celebrate and that is important to everyone. Uh, they were very happy to see uh, Baden Hill was there. Is that something that we all connect with? And there's significant uh, pre-settler um, importance to Baden Hill. And then obviously with settlers, that is important to us. So that's one that was, um, with the feedback came to me that was, was excellent. Um, one of the other ones that was uh, not on here and that they had provided feedback on was on Bethel Road. There was actually a longhouse there. And one of the only ones to, um, that is to my knowledge and that was in Wilmot and that Bethel and Sand Hills were quite significantly um, important to pre-settlers. And obviously that is still beautiful landscape to us as settlers today. I'm just gonna quick look at my uh, list here as well. Um, uh, one other person had commented to me that there was uh, just a minor edit for uh, spelling that Phillipsburg only has one L. 
And <clears throat> one other person, so the, now moving on to us to settler feedback was Oasis in the center. Um, they identified as that was the first community hall and um, or town hall and had asked me to provide you with that feedback. And uh, Punky Doodles Corner has been um, identified as one of the more fascinating places and has been getting a lot of media attention over the decades. And had, people had said that, you know, they had commented that this is definitely a cultural piece to us and were identified and quite regularly commented on in different uh, books and um, pieces like that. So I hope you take this as really positive uh, contributions. And I've encouraged um, people who brought this to my attention that the most productive thing is um, to continue to build relationships and have these discussions. But I was very um, honored to bring this feedback on their behalf. So I hope you take it with a good intent that it was meant to be. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you. Councillor Gordick. Thank you uh, through the mayor. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I just have a small thing, maybe it's just my own. Um, I don't see much culture um, actually with this. It seems to be more heritage. Um, so, and I get, cause that seems to be, you know, but um, the things that are there seem mostly as Councillor Hallman sort of suggested with regards to even pre-settler, it all seems to be about settlers and not anything that really to me signifies culture, which in indicates food, um, other parts of how we have evolved, not just buildings with our history. So I'm just wondering how that gets incorporated with the actual, um, and again, the, the diversity that we have within our community and, and how we've grown to be a diverse community and where that comes from. So for me, the missing part is the cultural part of what we're calling a cultural heritage. It seems to be more on the heritage side than the culture side. So it's just a small point. I'm wondering how we can maybe amend maybe not fix, because that's not what I'm looking for. I don't want the whole thing to change. I'm just wondering where we get the cultural part included in some of this report. Um, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, the definition of cultural and heritage landscape, um, it's, it's given to us from the province and it's um, a landscape that has been altered by humans um, or has, and or has spiritual significance. So, um, Capturing culture um, in a landscape is, is difficult, but it could be represented through, um, you know, agricultural silos. It could be represented by, um, you know, a mill pond. Um, but the intangible heritage, which I think you might be talking about, is very difficult to capture within this definition. Um, but certainly it is there. Um, and to address um, the settler heritage, um, I agree what has been presented, um, uh, it, it, it's reflective of what we have heard from the community thus far. So I am pleased um, that uh, we're hearing now of um, Sunfish Lake um, that had been obviously on a draft list that staff had uh, suggested, um, but the definition or the methodology by which cultural heritage landscapes are identified, um, it includes um, cultural heritage value and or interest, it includes historical integrity, but it also includes value by the community. And so if through this process we don't necessarily hear that it's valued by a community, it's very difficult to include a potential landscape. So this is very positive that I'm hearing other landscapes that we haven't heard through this process so far. Um, so follow up on that just uh, through you, Mayor. Um, so with the Sunfish Lake also would be the um, heritage significance if we're using that sort of term with Wilmot Line. It's um, it kind of, if you go through the, um, the definition of a, oh, my brain just went there there's a reason designation of that line um, it fits all the points um, so even Wilmot line um, it, with regards to even indigenous communities and being so close to um, the uh, Grand River um, not quite within um, treaty um, but um, but just um, the fact that that there does seem to be significance with regards to Wilmot line um, the Sunfish Lake I think for me um, I get what you're saying the community but the significance of being one of 10 lakes in the world that is that criteria 
seems to sort of circumvent the fact that the community doesn't seem to put that into value. I think as a protected type of lake, it should be considered part of the value. Um, but that's um, something that for you to take back to the committee to, to work through. Um, it's just, I think that the Sunfish Lake, um, the significance of what type of lake it is, I think is very important. And the com community may not know about it because it isn't really talked about. Um, it's something we learn about in science class, maybe in grade 10 or something like that about these kind of special lakes. And the fact that we have one in Wilmot, I think should be highlighted quite heavily. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Fanning. Thank you, through you, Mayor Armstrong. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I'm gonna throw something in too that <laughs> didn't make it. I'm one of the people that struggled with how to figure out and, and it's not that I don't have the capacity to draw a polygon on a computer. It was just trying to figure out how to articulate what I uh, wanted to say. So maybe maybe if I put it out there, you can uh, help me with it. <laughs> the Nith River winds through our, our township. Um, and it has been historically, uh, you know, with Indigenous people, waterways and early settlers were using the river as transportation. And today we use it for a variety of things. We draw water for irrigating fields. We um, use it mostly for recreation, um, some fishing. And the um, riparian edges of the Nith River have, in many places, uh, they were they were quite it was quite degraded and are now being restored in a lot of, of ways in a lot of places. Um, the Mike Scout uh, Wetlands Project is is one example of that uh, work happening. And I but I didn't know how to put a whole river and the views that you get when you, uh, you know, travel down along it. How do I put that into that feedback form? So maybe you've got a, a way to help me with that. Well, I, through you, Mr. Mayor, I've received your comments now and I agree. I think um, Wilmot staff would also agree that uh, for many reasons, um, transportation significance, um, Indigenous significance um, and, and and even industry within the township, uh, the Myth River should probably be included. Thank you. May I follow up? Sorry. Yes, you may. And being on Heritage Committee, I better comment that, uh, you know, it was used for powering uh, um, all sorts of industry. And that's been very significant in the development of our communities as well. Okay, thank you. I see no further questions. So we'll call the question. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. So we're now into the consent agenda. If members of council have any questions and want to remove an item from the consent agenda, please indicate. So now, as we will not take questions on consent items unless the items are requested to be removed to the regular agenda. Councillor Hallman. I think I'm gonna let uh, three Mayor, let uh, Councillor Gerber go first. I just have to find my list, but I know that there are some. Go ahead, Councillor Gerber. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, through you, Mayor Armstrong, just uh, item 11.1, um, uh, the uh, Award of Contract for Public Works Operations Center. I did have a question about that, so we could uh, so, answer that question. So we can remove that? Thank you. To the regular agenda, yes. That was the same one I had. <laughs> So, Clerk, you can read the recommendation, minus 
that report number PW 2022-03 uh, be approved. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm speaking a little quietly. Uh, that report number PW 2022-03 be approved. Okay, mover, seconder, Councillor Fanning, Councillor Gerber, all in favor? That is carried, thank you. We'll go on to the regular agenda reports. And we can start with 11.1. And uh, your uh, question on that, uh, Mr. Gerber? Yes, I thank her through you, uh, Mayor Armstrong. I see uh, Director Mullen, who's just with us. Um, just curious, and from my reading of it, my, my understanding was that the proposal is for a redesign of the existing space. I, I was wondering, is it, a, is it a possibility that the study could conclude that, that we require a new space? And, and was that possibility mentioned in there? Or, or not, maybe I missed it, or is that a possibility or is the study merely, I shouldn't say merely, but is the study focused on reworking the existing space? Is it a possibility that the study could conclude that we need a different space, I guess was my question. Go ahead, Mr. Molyneux. Uh Through you, Mayor. Uh, generally speaking, the intent of the um, study will be to look at the existing um, location in the existing facility, and that will be our focal point. We may identify a need for additional space through uh, through this study, but at this time, um, the focal point will be uh, the lands on Sand Hills Road. Thank you. Councillor Holman. Thank you through the mayor. Uh, Mr. Holman, can you comment on if there will be an intention to uh, uh, request or design uh, the possibility for us to consider green fleet moving forward and kind of build that into this process? Uh, through you, Mayor Armstrong, uh, the general intent of this, uh, this RFP would not be to look necessarily at green fleet per se. Um, there may be considerations for, um, you know, if, there, if we're looking at different types of fleet, there may be something that we could consider, but I wouldn't say it would be the bulk of the, the focus by any means of this uh, particular space needs. This is more so related to uh, to the growth of our our infrastructure um, and our, our vehicles and equipment that need to facilitate that as well as materials. Um, any further sort of uh, review of we'll say support for green fleet, I think would have to come through a separate and more comprehensive uh, review than than this type of a RFP. Sorry, I follow up mayor. I'll, I, perhaps I need to clarify that. I meant more about like charging stations for staff and or the possibility of us moving in that direction that if we were looking at space needs and uh, could, would it make sense to um, prepare that in a space needs analysis now versus I'm, I'm not sure what the intricacies are when you're planning for for that if it's if it's different so basically maybe if you can touch on on that if that's not relevant then i understand but thought it was just appropriate to kind of get clarification on that sure through you mayor um generally speaking most of our our equipment um you know from an electrical standpoint probably wouldn't be best suited for for that type of uh we'll say a shift um but that being said those are things that we could look at things like parking spaces uh you know uh, at the uh, the operation center moving forward or something like that that could support we'll call it general um fleet uh but more than uh more than anything i think what we're looking at here is just what spaces we do need for the vehicles and equipment that are coming in as well as the materials and the storage on site okay thank you Thank you, uh, through you, Mayor. Just to follow up a, a bit on Councillor Hallman for clarification, um, do staff park there, uh, Mr. Mullenhouse, um, in order to then switch over vehicles? Or is it literally that maybe perhaps they come in with the vehicles and it's really just uh, a work uh, in and out kind of thing? So if the case being what Councillor Hellman had referred to, would charging stations for staff as we move forward and our township properties incorporate um, uh, electric charging stations, could this incorporate a charging station so that if staff do have electric vehicles and they're parked during the day, it could be included in part of that study? 
uh, through you, Mary, yes, staff do park there. They have their personal uh, vehicle parking there. Um, there may be other in the future, obviously, when we do get back to uh, to meeting in person, there are you know other needs from a staff perspective uh, moving between um, centers, whether it be the admin center or our complex or whether we're looking at um, you know this operations facility. Uh, again, this is something that we could pretty simply look at um, with respect to, we'll say general vehicles. Um, but again, it's not sort of the bulk focus of, of what we're looking at here in terms of the uh, the space needs. Uh, but again, we could consider something like that through the review process. Thank you. Can I just follow up, Mayor? Yes, you may. So um, I understand that they're costly um, and whatever, but um, if nothing else, if it could be at least maybe um, an addendum or something to the re to that study to kind of look at what would be a place for those charging stations, uh, just as a sort of a two or three, um, depending upon, um, because I think as we go forward in our commitment to the 50 by 30 is that I think we should at least be following through with that, even if it um, it's something that we can't go with now, at least the options are there for us as a council to make those decisions because we have as a council committed to the 50 by 30. Okay, that's that can be an addendum to the study, I suppose. Okay, see no further questions. So, uh, clerk, read the uh, recommendation on that. Did you? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, no, we haven't had a mover or a seconder yet. Okay. Um, that RFP 2021-33 be awarded to Sterling Rothsay Consulting Inc. for the Public Works Operations Center Space Needs Study and Concept Design, as per their proposal submitted on December 1st, 2021, in the amount of $56,930 plus HST. And further, that pre-budget approval be provided for the inclusion of $25,000 within the 2022 capital program to complete these works. Okay, thank you. Moved by Councillor Fenning, seconded by Councillor Hallman. All in favor? That is carried, thank you. So the first report to look at, the closure of the road allowance and the clerk will give, read her report or give us her report. Thank you. Thank you through you, Mayor Armstrong. As noted in the report, the intention for the bylaw is to close an unused portion of Arnold Street that is located on 194 Arnold Street. In 1999, when this property was sold by the township to the current owner, this portion of the road allowance was not closed as the region was reviewing their water and wastewater infrastructure in the area. Retaining interest in the property at the time would have been advisable as the region's review may have resulted in infrastructure needs in the area. Through the passage of time, it remained as part of the property and never had reason to be revisited until now. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. There we go. There. Okay. Um, so as you can see, the red, yeah, the red outline here, that is showing us where 194 Arnold Street is. And this little blue, we'll call it a square, is approximately where um, part three of registered plan 58R-3908 is which is the unused uh, portion of the road allowance. Now, additional uh, departments reviewed the request from the property owner and confirmed there were no concerns in properly closing uh, this road allowance, this portion of the road allowance. Upon approval, the bylaw will be executed and registered on title, which will remove the township's interest in the property. So I will stop sharing that and if council has any questions i'd be more than happy to answer them thank you seeing no questions 
So read the recommendation. Yes, that report number ILS 2022-01 be received for information and further that council adopts bylaw number 2022-03. Okay, thank you. Moved by Councillor Fenning, seconded by Councillor Fisher. All in favor? Oh. Sorry, um, can I just clarify? I'm sorry, you threw you, Mayor Armstrong. Um, yeah. She said 2022-03, but my agenda package is 2201. And I'm just wanting to double check if I missed something or if there's a typo, because I believe that yeah, so I just wanted to, because I think, I did I hear wrong? Did you say three or is it supposed to be one? I just wanted to make sure. Certainly, um, through you, Mayor Armstrong. Uh, the correct number is 2022-03. Um, uh, one and two were for the uh, confirmatory bylaws from the earlier meetings in uh, 2022. That was a typo uh, in the resolution. Um, I was going to mention that. My apologies, I forgot. Thank you. Therefore, that is now corrected. Good. All in favor? Carried, thank you. And the next item is the Bridge Street Bridge. Mr. Molenhuis. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this report outlines the process undertaken for the Schedule B environmental assessment for the Bridge Street Bridge project. Uh, the EA process is a standardized process that's regulated by the Environmental Assessment Act, and it's for classes or groups of activities uh, for infrastructure projects. Now, the scale of the project and potential environmental impacts determines essentially the extent of process required um, that is to be approved under the Act. Uh, this project was initiated in 2019 and it was uh, prioritized in the township work program as a result of federal and provincial funding under the investing in canada infrastructure program the basis of uh, funding and our application looked to address roadway and structure deficiencies for this uh, bridge structure um, as it obviously in the past number of uh, years has resulted in numerous closures um, the process engaged uh, agencies the public stakeholders uh, and uh, the general public to solicit feedback and be involved in the review and commenting process. Um, I recognize this is a lengthy and detailed report and I will note for Council that the, the details provided just to outline the extent of the review and evaluation undertaken for projects like this. Um, as a result of this process, the preferred alternative recommended for Council endorsement this evening is a new multi-span structure to replace the existing single span steel truss structure. The recommendation before you this evening is in three parts. First, we are recommending that council endorse the preferred alternative such that staff can begin the final reporting process required under the act. Second, we are recommending award of detailed design, tendering and construction administration to Case Martin Associates. Um, they have confirmed for us that their competitive bid uh, previously submitted and the price and their ability to complete this remaining work. Um, and then they are available to, uh, to finish off the project um, such that uh, we can uh, continue on with the momentum as we currently have. And third, we are recommending further investigation of the uh, relocation potential for this, uh, the existing structure. Um, and we're asking for council to give us direction to report back prior to tendering um, and construction activity takes place. Uh, a preliminary cost estimate was provided with the report. However, there are a number of details that need to be further investigated um, to determine the viability of this option. Um, including construction impacts, transportation routing, and opportunities for supplemental funding uh, for the relocation piece. Uh, the cost information is provided for um, uh, the relocation and should be considered very much preliminary and subject to change uh, and further refinement should council give us that further direction. I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, about this report. Thank you, sir. Councillor Hallman. Thank you through the mayor. Uh, Mr. Molyneux, I just wanted to first thank you and your staff for excellent communication with the local community about this. Um, it was really great to um, see the ongoing discussions and clarification and uh, so that was much appreciated. 
um, there is a lot of community interest in preserving that bridge. I don't think we have any more trust bridges. Trust, I can't talk now. Trust bridges <laughs> in the community that are current for active transportation. Can you confirm that? Uh, through you, Mayor Armstrong, that's incorrect. We do have uh, two other um, steel truss uh, bridges. One is on uh, Shade Street, and the other would be right. on uh, on uh, Oxford Waterloo Road. Is this the oldest? Uh, through you, Mayor Armstrong, uh, I can't say whether or not it is the oldest, okay. but it's quite old. Okay. Um, so there's significant community interest about it staying in Wilmot and that it is relocated. Um, so I just wanted to provide that comment. And um, for just, you know, thinking about community projects that we have on the go, is it something that uh, the community or staff could review to see if maybe the wetlands would be an appropriate spot for it to be a walking spot? Has that been looked at? Or just kind of wondering what sites may have been considered? Uh, through you, Mayor Armstrong, um, there are no uh, real focal points at this point uh, with respect to where it may be relocated. I think there are a few that have been somewhat identified and there's been some general conversations had, but uh, but nothing that really, I think at this point that we could say is going to be a match and is going to work. Um, again, what we're asking for in this report is direction to, uh, to further investigate. Um, and obviously our focus would be from a relocation standpoint, obviously we would like to obviously keep that in, in Wilmot Township and um, be something that we could in, uh, enjoy here um, rather than to, uh, to place it anywhere else, um, considering its value here. So. Uh, but again, that's something that uh, I think we need to, um, you know, look for further details and further information before we can really, um, you know, speak to or commit to any particular location at this time. Okay, thank you for clarifying, especially the interest, staff's interest to support the community and their request to keep it here. That's that, but that was a vital comment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fisher. Councillor Fisher, go ahead. You're muted, sir. You call better? the mayor thing. <laughs> okay, a couple quick questions for um, Mr. Molinus. Um, could you give us a time frame? for when this existing bridge would be replaced? Uh, through you, Mayor. If we are to uh, gain endorsement this evening, uh, we will have a 45 day window with which our project file needs to sit on the public record and um, you know, be subject to further comment or further, uh, further requests. Um, following that, then we would start the, uh, the detailed uh, design and, and construction um, documentation process. Um, that could take you know, another couple of, of months, um, best case scenario. Uh, in an ideal situation, we would like to be tendering this structure uh, by midsummer. So June, July would be probably our latest time that we would like to tender this structure out, um, which gives us a fair bit of time, I think, from this point forward um, to do some, some, initial, some additional investigation and, and figure some things out. Um, the actual construction will be subject to whatever contractor we get and what type of, uh, of a time frame that they have for their staff and their, their um, project window. Um, and then it will also be limited by um, specific construction windows uh, that we can do some work in the field and some work we can't do based on trying to, uh, to avoid or mitigate any sort of environmental impacts. Um, so there's kind of a bit of a window we'd have to play with uh, in terms of uh, what contractor we get and what timing of the year and that kind of thing. So, but ideally, um, we'd be looking to report back on this particular uh, relocation piece by June of this year. Okay. And could I follow up, Mayor? Okay. Um, so I did a quick a couple of quick calculations. Uh, you you had uh, put down six hundred and twenty thousand estimated cost. And um, could you give us a, a cost of how much it would be just for a teardown? Uh, through you, Mayor, um, generally speaking, there would be a, a certainly would be a cost for uh, in a general world of demolishing the bridge. And so if you recall for Holland Mills, um, that uh, process was uh, demolition, but we did retain a few pieces uh, you know, for significance and for future use. Um, 
generally speaking, it can range anywhere between 100 and 200 thousand um, dollars. And I, I believe in that time, uh, Holland Mills uh, was about 2017 and 2018 um, was about the cost. Now there can be some, um, you know, uh, cost in there for demolition that. Uh, when we talk about the the type of demolition, whether it's just a complete removal versus if it's sort of a more, um, we'll say gentle removal, if you will, uh, that uh, that may impact costs and and may uh, have it sort of uh, come back a bit different. But I would expect in and around the um, one hundred thousand to two hundred thousand cost uh, for for demolition. Okay, and could I just ask one more question there, and direct it to Mr. Kelly? Okay, so anyway, my calculations are if it costs 620 to relocate, and if we subtract, say, 200,000, which would be cost of a teardown, I know that might be a little bit high. If we were to eliminate, uh, you had listed 125,000 for a relocation during construction. So I'm sure that's going to be take it off, park it somewhere. And then um, anyway, I'm, to Mr. Kelly, are there, would there be any heritage grants or is it possible the township could set up some sort of trust fund or something that where if interested citizens wanted to see this bridge somewhere in town or in Wilmot that they could donate to the, uh, the cause? Uh, through you, Mayor Armstrong, I guess to the first part regarding heritage grants um, for this type of work, uh, I'm not sure of any currently available, but like, like I've mentioned before, we're constantly watching grant programs as they become available <clears throat> to apply to. With regards to establishing a trust fund for, for donations, um, I think with some of the comments from Mr. Molenhuis, it'd be probably a bit premature to set up any sort of fund to, to take donations towards a project that we're not certain Um the outcome of or, or certain of what exactly is going to happen. Um, if there's a decision in future down the road of what to do with the bridge and, and there's costs associated with that, we would obviously be open to accepting donations from the public to, to assist in offsetting the, the levy impacts of that sort of thing. Um, but setting up a, a trust fund right now uh, would be premature in the event that we accepted donations for a project that didn't end up occurring um, from an administrative standpoint returning those funds um, and having issued tax receipts is is a bit burdensome, I would say. Um, but uh, we obviously be open to the conversation and, and working with the community if, if anything were to move forward. Thank you, Councillor Fanning. Thank you, through you, Mayor Armstrong. Um, I'm very much looking forward to the conversation uh, when you do come back to council, assuming you pass that tonight to uh, talk about um, what the potential is uh, for relocating it. So I'll reserve any comments I have about that till that uh, later conversation. Um, with bridges and uh, floodplains um, and, and the, the particular location and, and uh, um, terrain around around this bridge it's in a bit of a curve um, and the the bridge itself can create some structural flow uh, parameters that might uh, increase damming of ice uh, during a major flood event can you um, explain some of the the changes that reconstruction will um, make to that uh, through you, Mayor, um, uh, to speak to the to the existing structure, um, a single span uh, structure um, with sort of a limited, we'll call it a limited uh, window um, area underneath for um, uh, passage of, of water and ice. Uh, this replacement structure that uh, we are recommending, it is a, a three span structure, so there will be, um, you know, some support structures through uh, the middle um, span of, of of the river. Um, with that though, uh, and you can obviously see if you're looking into the detail of, of the reports and some of the drawings, um, there's actually quite an increase in terms of the area for which that, you know, flood water and, and potential ice um, can navigate through. 
Um, it's a 50% increase in terms of the area uh, that would uh, would be there today. Um, additionally, there's uh, you know the the structure itself, uh, the road structure itself is is elevated from its existing condition, or the proposed elevation uh, would be higher. So there's more area for which things to pass through. Um, generally speaking, with with the introduction of supports or piers um, and a multi-span bridge. Um, those can also be designed in such a way that might be helpful for, we'll say, breaking up ice or at least having ice sort of move through. So um, with anything, though, uh, within the, the Nith um, uh, River, uh, we do see that there are jamming opportunities, whether it's a single span structure, whether it's a multi-span type of structure. We know that there are, you know, depending on what type of uh, of a thaw event or what type of, uh, you know, February, March, we kind of get with uh with with thawing and with some rains and stuff like that um you know there is always the opportunity for for ice jamming um so that should be something that that folks are aware of um and that uh we certainly see that uh with with this new opportunity it does also give great opportunity with not just uh, winter type um thawing events but also just your general flood events that it's got more opportunity to pass through through water and i think in many cases it actually has improved or will improve the the hydraulic condition of that particular structure just to follow up, if I may, um, are you aware, and, and I mean, may, you may not know the answer to this, I'm just curious, do you know if, if the river has ever come as high as the bottom uh, uh, of the span? Uh, through you, Mayor Armstrong, I am not aware of, of, uh, of any historical cases uh, of that, but uh, but I know through the, the past four years and that I've been present, there's been some significant events that certainly have gotten close. Um, and we've had a few bridges actually, uh, I think actually uh, the Oxford Waterloo Bridge where some of the underside um, of the structure was damaged uh, through, through ice flow. So maybe it didn't actually, we'll say overtop the bridge, but uh, in some locations, it does come pretty close to, uh, to the underside. Yeah, I think there was a photo in your report that showed that the water was right within inches of the bottom of the bridge. So, um, Councilor Gordick. Uh, through you, Mayor, uh, this might be to uh, 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 Mr. Kelly. Um, I'm going to probably be the only person here. You guys are all going to not be happy with me, but um, I'm wondering, Mr. Kelly, to how far down the cost um, do we go with uh, the relocation of this bridge? I mean, we've, we've, we've seen that we're having to tighten our purse strings on some of the other commitments we have, for example, um, for some of the uh, renovations and changes to our community centers. And I know they come from different pots, um, so it's not technically the same thing, but do we have a top end limit um, that we would say, no, we're not going to do this relocation, even though the heritage significance for the township is great, um, but is there a, a cost that we would sort of say, well, no, that's just not, we can't do that. And I'm just wondering if you can speak to that a bit. Go ahead, sir. Through you, Mayor Armstrong, I think uh, ultimately the decision whether to spend extra money ultimately comes down to council, not myself. I can advise you that uh, within our budget parameters, um, we have 3.5 odd million dollars put towards this project. Any costs over and above that, we'd need to find alternate funding sources for. Uh, generally, when we don't have grant programs, <clears throat> which are highly unlikely to come towards this project, seeing as we've already um, obtained close to $3 million from the federal and provincial governments for this project, anything over and above is gonna come from Wilmot Township, but that decision has to come from council, um, not from myself. Uh, no, I totally understand that. I appreciate. I appreciate. It. I just. I wanted to just clarify though that there we were, we are within that scope of the three point five million. This six hundred is somewhat inclusive of that, and then if we go over, then we have to sort of make a decision. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, all three, Mayor Armstrong. I'm happy to respond to that. Um, our initial uh, request for funding um, did not consider the relocation of the bridge um, and the cost associated with relocation. Um, our initial uh, funding request um, had 
considered uh, more or less replacement um, with uh, with a demolition. Um, and that was a general request. We didn't know at the time what would actually come out of it um, or whether it would be uh, viable or not. Um, but that's kind of how we set up our, our requests to um, to gain funding from uh, the province uh, and, and the federal government. Um, so at this time, the 3.5 that we have available is what we've been told um, uh, uh, through Infrastructure Ontario is, is a hard cap for us in terms of the, the agreement and our funds available. Um, so if anything comes outside of that uh, 3.5, then that would be certainly all of ours to, uh, to address. And I will note um, that uh, with construction prices and timing of tender and knowing what uh, sort of COVID uh, bidding environments are like, it is not predictable. Um, we can't really predict as, as sort of accurately as we used to be able to, um, as the supply chain with materials and prices of, of specific materials um, is very much fluctuated drastically in the last little bit and continues to do that. So um, in my opinion, I would be prepared as council that uh, the, the funds required um, you know, to, to move this uh, structure would likely uh, be required outside of the funding uh, allocation and the, the agreement we have with the province of the feds. Okay, thank you. So, no more questions. Have the clerk read the uh, recommendation, please. The Township of Wilmont take the following actions with respect to the class environmental assessment for the Bridge Street Bridge structure number 34 slash B dash T91. Endorse the preliminary design for construction of the preferred alternative multi span slab on girder bridge as detailed in report PW 2022 02, dated January 17, 2022, and to direct staff to file the notice of study completion for this municipal class environmental assessment schedule B study by means of posting the notice in the local newspapers, the township social media, direct mailings, and place the project file report on the public record for a period of 45 days. And further, that following the 45 calendar day review period, the township proceed to the detailed design phase, contract document preparation, tendering, and construction of preferred alternative for replacement of the Bridge Street Bridge structure number 34 slash B dash T9, awarding KSmart and Associates this scope of work based on their proposal for provisional scope included in the RFP 2020-18 as submitted on May 26, 2020, at a cost of $126,000. $419.70 plus H HST and further that staff be directed to further investigate the relocation of the existing structure within the township and prior to calling the tender for construction report back to council with a recommendation. Mayor Armstrong, you are muted. Sorry, it's a mayor thing. Uh, so that was moved by Councillor Holman and seconded by Councillor Fisher, all in favor. That is carried, thank you. It's good to see that bridge finally getting done. I can remember going down there and a few years ago and having the picture taken because the grant money was made available to us. So it's been a long time coming. Okay. Next is the cemetery bylaw. Mrs. Okrafka. 
Thank you, Mayor Armstrong, through you. Good evening. We're pleased to present Council tonight with the updated cemetery bylaw, which is intended to repeal and replace bylaw 2004-28 and 2010-26. There have been many changes since 2004, both in cemetery operations and in legislation that have prompted the need for an updated bylaw. There's been a significant, there has been significant input from both the township solicitor and staff in developing the updated bylaw. As you'll see in the accompanying staff report, presenting the proposed bylaw to council review is one of the first steps in the process to have it finalized. Prior to final approval, the public is notified of the proposed bylaw by way of notice posted in the newspaper, as well as signage posted at Riverside Cemetery for a period of four weeks. Copies are made available to any person in the general public who wishes to see a copy. Once notification has taken place, the bylaw is submitted to the Bereavement Authority of Ontario for final approval. It's important to note that no further changes can be made to the bylaw once approved by the BAO. Once all of the necessary steps have been taken for approval, staff will bring a follow-up report to Council. Staff are happy to take any questions at this time. Have the clerk read the recommendation, please. That, re that report PFRS 2022-001 as prepared by the Manager of Community Services regarding the proposed cemetery bylaw update be received for information purposes and further that the draft cemetery bylaw be endorsed in principle for submission to the Bereavement Authority of Ontario, bracket BAO. Thank you. Could I have a mover and a seconder for the recommendation? Councillor Gerber, Councillor Fenning. Any questions? We have Councillor Hallman. Uh, Mayor, I have a few questions. Would your preference be me doing one at a time or going through my list? You have the floor. You can go through your okay. list. All right. Thank you. So through the mayor, uh, my first one on the list for this is 4.2. It appears that the decommissioned uh, cemetery there is not listed on this one on Huron Road. I'm just wondering what's up with that. Is that the Union Cemetery through you, Mayor Armstrong? I'm not sure what the title is. It's uh, right, it's right, it's near uh, the township's owned gravel pit. It's on Huron Road. And I didn't see that listed there. I see Ms. Jackson has her hand up, Mayor. I don't know if she wants to reply to that. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Through the mayor. Um, we if it is Union Cemetery, we did look into that. It is we do not maintain that cemetery. So uh, it is owned privately and we do not operate that one. <laughs> okay, that would be the answer to that. Thank you. Uh, nine. 917, I did want to comment on um, some of the intricacies with this. With Wilmot committing to equity, diversity, and inclusion, um, just putting my lens on and looking at this through other religious faiths and connecting with um, a Sikh member of our community just to get their lens through this, it was identified that um, this wouldn't fit their religious rights and that they would have to go to Kitchener. So I'm just wondering what staff did to consider other religious rights and practices, and if there's an opportunity to do more investigation with that, and um, and then perhaps you know bring that back at a later date. I know that it's important to uh, kind of have this going, but just wanted to know if there was further lenses that could be uh, explored with that. Ms. Jackson, did you want to take that? Sure, I can. Thank you, Mayor. Um, is that with, uh, there's a 9.17 and a 9.1.7, nine you're, you're talking about oh, nine sorry. point. So with respect to the artificial flowers, perennial plantings, is that the one you're referring to? Okay, let me go back to see what he sent me. I thought it was 9.17. So let me just- it, That could uh, be it. I just want to make sure okay. I'm on the right one. I think one. <laughs> that, that was the one that was made in the, made the NOPA side. So I'm thinking that's it. Okay. With different religious aspects to contribute, yes. 
Okay, so uh, we're happy to have a discussion with anybody who has, this is the time for uh, public input. So we're more than happy to take feedback on the language. Uh, and then uh, we would we would consider anything, we, we want it to be inclusive, obviously. So uh, we'll do whatever we need to do to, to arrange that. The reason that this is in here though, is for maintenance purposes in the winter um, for staff. And it just often, Artificial flowers get left for long periods of time, get damaged, uh, and it's just about trying to keep the, the cemetery clean and clear. Um, but we're happy to discuss any recommendations to make sure that we meet the requirements that uh, for everyone so that they are comfortable using our cemetery. So it was highlighted that Kitchener was, um, that that was a preferred for um, different faiths, for ceremonial and different things that come up. So maybe staff could reach out to the city kitchener to find out what um, practices they have in place for including um, different faith groups. I, that would be my feedback anyway, to see if um, there's anything that we could do for inclusion to improve our uh, inclusion that way. Yeah, through sure, through the mayor. Um, I, I do know that some cemeteries have um, specific sections for different religious groups. They likely also have larger cemeteries uh, with more available space. So we're really working with a relatively small cemetery um, and we don't have capacity to last for another, uh, I don't know, four decades or so long, long after my time. But uh, we don't necessarily have the luxury of having enough space to accommodate various rules like that. But we are happy to reach out to Kitchener. Uh, and I, I do know the parks director there and uh, we'll, we'll contact them and see what their, what their uh, methods are that make that the premier place. <laughs> That's greatly appreciated. I think just for clarification. So for example, if there was a spiritual celebration that was happening in a month that we were typically closed, um, that they would go and visit their loved one and leave something there, technically it would be contradicting our bylaw. So there would be fear that we weren't being inclusive to them. So maybe we, that's that's kind of the lens, just to add more clarity that um, that if they were to follow the bylaw, it would impede their religious rights. So how do we articulate that? And they had just used Kitchener as an example. So, um, and then the other one I just wanted to mention was just scrolling down my list here. Eleven point one. Um, I'm not so much saying I'm concerned for you, Ms. Jackson. It's just that I know that these, if we look back to when this was originally done, this will probably outlive your time with us. <laughs> so I'm just wondering, that's a lot of power to give to that role. Can you provide clarity or maybe the CAO can provide clarity as to why um, the solicitor, I'm assuming the solicitor suggested this or why this is here? Sure, through the mayor. Uh, this is really in with, there are a lot of regulations around cemetery operations. I don't have that kind of authority to change uh, regulations that, that fall under the Cemetery Act. I have authority to manage the property. So uh, some examples of what I might use that authority for is, um, you know, I think last year or the year before, we widened the lane in a certain area to allow easier flow of traffic and we eliminated two lots in order to accommodate that. During COVID, uh, we've made a number of changes to rules and to operations that would be under my authority to do that, something that we can't capture in a bylaw uh, because it's an unusual circumstance. But I don't have the ability to make a decision on how or when or where someone is buried or um, affect the legislation in, in any way. It's really just about managing this, the property, if that helps, hopefully. That definitely helps. Thank you so much for that clarification. That is appreciated. And I think that is the last one on my list. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Holland. Councillor Gordick. Uh, three, Mayor Armstrong. Um, I just wanted to double check. So um, the abandoned cemeteries that you've mentioned and uh, in the report, it mentions that we're going to be putting up a notice in Riverside. Um, would those abandoned cemeteries, because we maintain them, not also, or because they're considered abandoned, people you, people don't go to them? Is that why there wouldn't be a notice put up there? Uh, through the mayor, um, I can answer this unless you'd like to, um, Ms. Okrafka, okay, you're good. Um, we, because they're not active, we would not be posting in those. Um, so they definitely, yeah, that's, that's the main reason. So you're on the right track, yeah. Okay, kind of figure. And then just a, a second question. Um, it's not in the bylaw that I could see. So um, 
going forward in our future green world. Um, I don't see anything in our bylaws and being that this has to be approved by the BAO, did I say it right? BAO. Um, I don't see anything in here with regards to green initiatives as we move forward with some of those things. So the biodegradable pods that are um, sort of out there, I don't believe there are any in our um, region at the moment, but um, I see from looking at the newspapers that they are something um, and biodegradable urns, things like that. Um, is that something that can be incorporated into this bylaw so that we don't have to go back to the BAO if somebody does come to us? Um, is that something we've looked at um, with regards to our, again, our initiative with 50 by 30? Um, what are we doing um, with those and, and our bylaws? This is a Kravka. Thank you, through you, Mayor Armstrong. We have already began looking at the initiative. Uh, we sent our cemetery coordinator on a conference last year in Niagara Falls, and she has begun some research on that. So we have begun looking into it. It's still relatively new, but definitely we are open to that. So just a follow up then with that. So because these have to be approved and we don't change them, how does that get incorporated if we have someone, let's say that within let's say three years and our bylaws haven't been changed, how do we incorporate that person's services if it isn't in our bylaws? So it, would this be something that we should actually look at now before this goes to the BAO in case it does come to us? Through you, Mayor Armstrong, I would think we would probably do an addendum to the bylaw similarly as we did when we uh, introduced the columbarium in 2006. Oh, sorry, Manny, uh, or Ms. Kravka, sorry. Um, <laughs> the, um, how quickly would that, does it have to be approved then by the BAO um, if you get the addendum, which is cool, I get that, because we want to make sure we get our I's dotted and our T's crossed that it's done properly, understand that. Um, but is there a time frame with this going to the BAO that potentially puts us in a bind in the future? So I'm just kind of time frame. I know you can't tell me exact, but just to get that addendum sort of looked at. It would be a similar process to this one where it would have to be posted in the four week process, but we can certainly, you know, expedite the research into the initiative. So that way we're done with that sooner rather than later. Councillor Holman. Thank you for the mirror. One other thing that I made note about was, um, do we have a spot where the community can spread ashes? Through you, Mayor Armstrong, we have several cremation lots, but no, uh, and the columbarium is strictly for ashes. We don't have any area for spreading of ashes in the cemetery. Has that been investigated and was a reason why we don't have one? Just curious. It has not been investigated to date, no. Is that something that staff can do and report back on? As Absolutely. the information is becoming more, um, more common than not. Yeah, if I can add to that, Mayor Armstrong, uh, there are a number of cemeteries now uh, going with uh, gardens that are um, used for that purpose. So uh, we could look into that. Uh, this would be something similar to Councillor Gordick's request, um, something we would do down the road a little bit. We're not really ready for, for those things quite yet. And um, just acknowledging that Ms. Okrafka is, is new to the cemetery business um, with her role and um, with the departure of our former cemetery uh, expert, we're still uh, working through and wanted to get this bylaw updated to the best of our ability now, but we definitely have those things in mind and we'll look at those. It's pretty, um, easy to get a hold of other other municipalities language we just have to be prepared to be ready to move in those directions first so we're happy to look into those perfect a couple of directions to be taken okay no further questions call the question all in favor that is carried thank you Next item is the community players, Ms. Jackson. Thank you, Mayor Armstrong. 
Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor, members of council, the public. Um, as you're all aware, the community players, also known as TCP, have been providing quality theater performances in Wilmot Township for many decades, since uh, 1984, in fact. Uh, since the township does not have a dedicated theater space, they have historically used church space and for the past uh, several years have used township space, specifically St. Agatha Community Center and the New Hamburg Community Center. Uh, historically, rental requests are approved at the staff level. However, this year there's been a request for extended exclusive rental space. And as a result, staff has brought forward the 2022 request for council's consideration. The request includes exclusive use of St. Agatha Community Center from April 1st to the 22nd uh, for their spring show and the arena floor from April 23rd to May 18th for the delivery of that spring show and the New Hamburg Community Center from October 2nd to November 20th for planned rehearsals and productions. So due to the impacts of COVID-19 and the need to reduce capacity at venues, at least over the past two years, TCP is planning to increase the overall number of performances in order to allow the same number of spectators to attend their shows. And the exclusive use requests do impact our regular rental groups, um, such as the New Hamburg Concert Band, the Wilmot Family Resource Center, and, and a couple of others, as well as the ability to offer rentals for weddings and buck and does. And staff have met with uh, a number of these groups and we will continue to work with all impacted groups to arrange alternate spaces in the township uh, where possible. And at this time, there are very few requests for rentals uh, uh, for weddings uh, due to COVID, um, which is a bit of an advantage at this particular time. But I do wanna make it really clear that it's not TCP's desire to displace any other group. They are a very community-minded organization, and uh, unfortunately, though, due to the significant impact on their, on their volunteer base, tear down, set up, I can't even imagine the amount of hours they spend uh, lugging staging and props, so they really do need a home base, and therefore staff are recommending the approval of this request for the 2022 theatre season, as outlined in the report. And then to address the long-term needs, uh, there is a recommendation in the report that council directs staff to work on an anchor tenant agreement for the New Hamburg Community Center with the goal of having an agreement in place for the 2023 season. And of course, staff will bring a report back to council uh, with that information in future. Uh, I did wanna make one uh, correction note um, with respect to the report. We noticed after it was um, completed that there's a duplication in the booking form. So the discounted amount was is actually 500 less than, than what was reported in the report. So I just wanna make sure that we cleared that up uh, on air tonight. And uh, Ms. Okrafka and myself are both here to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Will the clerk read the recommendation, please? That the request for exclusive use of St. Agatha Community Center from April 1st to 22nd, 2022, and the arena floor from April 23rd to May 18th, 2022, and the New Hamburg Community Center from October 2nd to November 20th, 2022, by the community players, bracket TCP, for planned rehearsals and productions in 2022 be approved and further that staff be directed to work with TCP to develop an anchor tenancy agreement for the New Hamburg Community Center for all future exclusive use requests. Thank you and that is moved by Councillor Fenning, Councillor Gordick and now we entertain questions, Councillor Gordick. Uh, thank you through you, Mayor Armstrong. So thank you, Ms. Jackson, for clarifying um, that point. I was a little disappointed with the report uh, when I read it, thinking that um, it felt like the um, community groups hadn't been involved. Um, and so it felt like, um, and I understand in the background, but the report is written in such a way that it feels, and even the word displace, it's not a word. I, I think um, relocation is, I think, might have been a, a nicer term. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear that that ongoing conversations is happening and that the groups are aware of 
the requests being put forward um, for TCP. So I did want to thank you for clarifying that um, because I had heard from a couple of people that um, I just I just want everybody to realize that this is um, a, a community involved group and that TCP is very much committed to working with the community. So it, the report kind of um, felt a bit um, that we were being biased towards TCP without the, the impact on the community group. So thank you for clarifying that. Um, the other thing is um, I, I, I'm not, I know that the dates are there, I, I don't understand the calendar with the number one, two, three, and four. I, and I thought maybe it was a color coding thing because I printed it off. And then I went and looked at the agenda. Could someone speak to what one, two, three, and four means when I'm looking at the map? Because I don't see a number one, two, three, and four on the calendar. So I just didn't know what that meant. Uh, are you referring to the contracts that have been issued? Um, um, I'm going to put up my little, it's the calendar. Oh, you can't see. No, it doesn't matter. Okay. You it's can got it, like yeah. March. Yeah. And then it, on April 22nd, it says options for exclusive from April. And then it's got one, two, three, and four. But I don't know what those, num I know what those numbers mean. I just don't know what they reference on the calendar. Uh, go ahead, Manny. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I can speak Sorry, to Mary. that too, you, Mayor Armstrong. Um, those were the calendars that were actually submitted by the community players as a part of their request oh, to kind of try and lay their request. And those were the options that they had wanted us to look at. And we looked at what users were using, what facilities, when we had our meetings with the user groups, and then subsequently TCP. Um, the recommendation that we came to you with is as a result of the discussions we've had that in October and November, New Hamburg would be the best location for them. In April, St. Agatha would be, but they had wanted us to look at numbers one, two, three, and four as options. Thank you very much. I appreciate You're the welcome. clarification on that. Appreciate My it. Pleasure. And I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Fenning. Thank you, through you, Mayor Armstrong. I'm uh, happy to see this um, report and, and the recommendation and that we pursue uh, uh, further anchor tenancy uh, arrangement with TCP. I know that uh, they are very much community minded and are very much concerned with working collaboratively. And, and I feel like having a permanent and well thought out uh, plan to enable them to continue to provide our community with this fantastic uh, service um, will help everybody to be able to work around it and not um, and, and not have anybody being left out. Um, and I think that it sends a really great message to our community members who are not um, interested in all of the sports things, but are more interested in arts and, and uh, these types of things. Not that you have to be one or the other, but I know that there are many youth who... Um, really are looking for more of that type of, of uh, pursuit. And, and I, I think this is a really good direction for us to take. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilor Gerber. Yes, thank you, uh, Three Mayor Armstrong. Yeah, thanks for all the, uh, all the work that's gone into the report. Uh, appreciate hearing that dialogue is ongoing with those groups. Uh, that would be affected by by this report and and potential uh, anchor tenant exclusive use uh, a concept as well. Just looking ahead to the um, the anchor tenant exclusive use uh, discussions, I, I understand that that also would be coming back to council. And I, I was just wondering, I I think it reads that that would be for the New Hamburg Community Center, but do you see it being for the New Hamburg Community Center? Do you mean by that, do you mean the upstairs space or do you see it more as the arena space? Do you see it more, I mean, I know sometimes there's confusion as to what we call that that building in the two in the two parts and what's on the outside and what's on the inside and all that sort of stuff. Um, and also St. Agatha, is that in, would that be involved in that at all or is it a combo of the spaces or maybe too early to predict uh, the outcome of that or what they're looking at? Uh, three, Mr. Mayor, I think it is a bit early, Councillor Gerber, um, with respect. Um, we, we really don't know what that anchor tenancy will look like. We just know that this concern and this challenge has been floating around for some time, and we want to help that organization function more efficiently so that they can capitalize on their volunteers and, and make their productions 
less stressful, less work, all of that. And, and therefore they end up being more successful. Um, and you end up getting more volunteers to support your organization uh, when it's when it's able to have a, a location that works for them. And prior to my time, there was discussion about um, you know work being done on the New Hamburg Arena space. So we'll consider you know some of those plans whether or not uh, you know TCP is able to assist with any any aspects of of making changes that might suit them and we'll work together on on what a, an agreement might might look like we both will probably not get everything we want that's how negotiation generally goes but we will do our very best to make sure that they have a, a workable space to carry on doing and I have never seen a TCP production so I have to make this work so that I can actually attend one before uh, you know <laughs> so Thank you for the question, but I do feel it's a little bit premature yet. And then, yeah, uh, thank you for that. And, and maybe just to follow up as well through you, Mayor Armstrong. I mean, certainly, um, I mean, to me, the opportunity is ripe to explore something, uh, something like this. I know for for many years, sort of the shadow of the of the old arena, if you will, as a as a third ice pad, always was sort of out there. Um, we've certainly clarified that now. Um, I remember attending. Um, a leadership conference and part of it was on, on campus at St. F of X, I believe in Nova Scotia. And, and one of the, one of the sessions was in basically an old style arena, like we have that had been converted to, to more of a full-time theater space, you know, assembly hall kind of, uh, it was beautiful. I remember actually taking pictures and sending it to, to people who were involved at the time, like, Hey, this is, you know, could be a real possibility. Um, and certainly for for tourism and for for an arts and culture hub and anchor, I mean, the space has a lot of potential for that. So we need to see um, what could possibly come of this with some of the clarity we have now around the future of the facility. Thank you. And no further questions. We call the question. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Next under the correspondence, have the clerk read the recommendation, please. Sorry, I had a little technical difficulty there. Uh, that was uh, correspondence items 13.1, 13.2, 13.3, .3, 13.4 be received for information. I have a mover and a seconder. Moved by Mr. Gerber, Councillor Hallman, and Councillor Hallman, you comment or question. Thank you through the mayor. Uh, I would like Wilmot Council to follow the lead of North Dumfries and submit our own uh, resolution regarding 13.4, uh, the resolution related to Ontario truck parking study. Councilor Gordy, can you have one as well? Sorry, I sort of interrupted there. My apologies. Um, yeah. Go ahead. So, what we would be asking at this point then is to take um, is it is it a direction for staff to come back uh, oh. with with the revised resolution or? I think what we're asking for is just an endorsement of, of North Dumfries uh, resolution. Okay, thank you. Ms. Gordick. Uh, thank you through the mayor. Um, just to follow up with uh, Councillor Hallman. Yeah, like our highway seven and eight for us uh, in particular. Um, when they closed off part of Highway 78 by putting the markers, I think it, it would be uh, prudent for us to at least uh, support AIR um, and North Dumfries um, with regards to that resolution, um, because, you know, our truck drivers do need support, especially as our, uh, the trucking, and not mine, sorry, I shouldn't say that, the trucking industry is going through some hard times with COVID and some of the restrictions and um, we need to be able to help them and having a rest stop um, has, that has been taken away from them. I'd like to see that further. Uh, second, um, um, when uh, Quebec's Bill 21 went through, 
um, we as a council had sent through a, a, pr a previous a similar motion. Um, and I'm wondering if it would be um, something that we could look at resending to go along because it seems to be that with some of the teachers being uh, terminated in Quebec, there seems to be a collective response going out. And I'm wondering if it would be uh, something for us to resend ours along with the 13.3 um, that's included in our correspondence and just asking for clarification if it's required or um, it, going once is fine or should we do it again? Holt. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Armstrong. If it is the direction of council for us to uh, resend it, uh, by all means, uh, staff can uh, take that direction and recirculate it. Mr. Gerber. Yes, thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor Armstrong. Just wanted to um, to use the the uh, correspondence in the city of uh, uh, Sarnia just to just to echo that uh, that certainly our residents. Um, are certainly concerned over uh, petty theft, vandalism, and certainly more serious crimes, you know, related to car break-ins, vehicle, you know, trailer thefts that have been occurring, not just in Wilmot, uh, but also throughout, uh, it seems, sort of small town, uh, South Russian Ontario. Um, I appreciate, I believe, Councillor Fisher has already sort of forwarded some of these concerns to Chief Larkin and has heard back uh, from him. And I also believe we have reason to believe there maybe actually have been some, you know, an arrest or some success in perhaps solving uh, some of those concerns. But um, maybe just a good time, maybe just to, uh, to maybe just to entreat the mayor to, you know, at any opportunity that you have in your role at the region to um, to follow up with Chief Larkin or through the police services board, just to, you know, reiterate our the love of police presence and uh, you know any patrol cars that can come through here sort of in those late hours or early morning hours when some of these problems seem to be occurring i know um i know we've already bemoaned the loss of the of the downtown station we've already been through the relocation of the stations and the distance we are from other stations and i, I don't wish to revisit all those conversations but but i do know it's always good for uh, for the chief to hear of things that are uh, that are happening uh, in the region and certainly for him just to be reminded of uh of the appreciation of uh, patrol cars when they're able to come through our area. Sort of on the, um, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, I suppose. Absolutely, and I will uh, have that conversation with the chief. Councilor Gordick. Uh, through you, Mayor, so just to follow up, I'm not quite sure how we, um, I'm, I'm just wondering if we need to bring that up as a vote from our council, um, or is it just my direction that I'd like the motion that we did for Bill 21 to go back out again in recirculation? Because I think the more that people hear from us, because I believe our resolution was sent out or our motion was sent out letter um, probably over two years ago, because we were still all in chambers. Um, and I think that there has been um, other councils throughout Ontario that have been doing a collective uh, thing. So I'm just wanting direction from the clerk as to do we need to take a vote from the rest of council to resend that? Because I would, I'm asking for a direction for it to be resent. Well, I think uh, with the direction from council, it's kind of acknowledgement if everybody kind of acknowledges that what they want to do and thumbs up are really, there we go. All kinds of thumbs up on, on both those items to go out. So that's good. And Ms. Chambers, you wanted to address us. Yes, through you, Mayor, um, just to, to provide some guidance. If Council is um, directing staff to do something with these pieces of correspondence, the preference would be through a resolution of Council. Um, so on the issue related to the Ontario truck parking study, um, I would suggest a resolution directing staff um, to support or to, um, or that Council supports the North Dumfries uh, motion and that it be circulated to the Minister of Transportation. And then um, for Councillor Gordick's um, request to recirculate um, the former motion, uh, I would prefer that that be a, a motion directing uh, staff to do so as well. Um, with respect to the third item from Councillor Gerber, um, I did have a meeting with uh, Chief Larkin and his staff this week, um, and uh, he's very open to hearing those types of things, so I'm uh, happy to pass your, your sentiments along to him. 
certainly something we can. <clears throat> If the clerk would like to create a motion for each of those two items, then we can, we will pass those resolutions. Did you want to have a vote on the correspondence? Finish that vote first, and then we can create motions to go to for the other two. Okay, all in favor of the correspondence, motion on correspondence, uh, it's carried, thank you. So the first item will be the support for North Dumfries. You wanna create a recommendation for that, <coughs> Ms. Middleholt? Sorry, my apologies, I, I just uh, uh, writing it as we go. Um, that staff support item 13.4 from the Township of North Dumfries and that the resolution be circulated. Okay, and that is moved by Councilor Gordick, Councilor Hallman, all in favor? That is carried, thank you. And the next is the Bill 21. Yeah, uh, that the, sorry, um, let me just make sure I got the, okay. That the resolution in support of Bill 21 from October 2019 be recirculated. Okay, so that is moved by Councillor Fenning and seconded by Councillor Fisher. Okay, Councillor Fenning, you have a comment? Yes, thank you through you, Mayor Armstrong. It's not in support of Bill 21. Um, it's actually uh, oh, <laughs> quite the opposite. Um, we don't support it and we think that they should repeal it. My apologies. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, that voting? was that was a uh uh Oh, that was bad. I'm, I'm, I'm. Oh, so sorry. Uh, in, uh, in support we're, of we're repealing. The, we're supporting the correspondence in front of us and repeating our previous, supporting our previous correspondence. In support oh. of Ida. Oh dear. <laughs> um, thirteen point three. That the uh, that. Okay. Let me. Uh, my apologies. Let me read. Oh, that um, that council endorse item thirteen point three and further uh, that the correspondence from October twenty nineteen in support of repealing Bill twenty one be recirculated. I'm so sorry. So we. Have a mover and seconder for that. Councillor Gordick and Councillor Fenning. So all in favor. That is carried. Thank you. Next item is the bylaws and the clerk read the recommendation for the bylaws, please. that bylaw number 2022-03 and 2022-05 be read a first, second, and third time and finally passed in open council. Thank you. Move by Councillor Gerber, second by Councillor Fenning. All in favor? That is carried, thank you. The next one is the Alpine Provisional Bylaw. Have the uh, clerk read the motion for that, the recommendation. That bylaw number 2020-32 be read a third time and finally passed in open council. 
And that is moved by Councilor Fisher, Councilor Hallman, all in favor? That is carried, thank you. Are there no notice of motions? And announcements. Councilor Hallman. Thank you through the mayor. Um, it is really exciting that the New Dundee community with the partnership of Wilmot Township staff, uh, specifically fire services, will be hosting a vaccine clinic on January 25th. There are still appointment times available. So please reach out to uh, Wilmot Services uh, for more information. If you're still requiring a first, second or third dose, and again, that's January 25th between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. And I'm really looking forward to volunteering that day for the vaccine clinic. And the location of the clinic? Very good reminder, the New Dundee Community Center. Perfect. Any other announcements? Very good. Well, all we can do now is just remind people to get their cars off the road so the boys can clean the streets. So, next recommendation is the confirm the proceedings. Madam Clerk. That bylaw number 2022-04 to confirm the proceedings of council at its meeting held on January 17th, 2022, be introduced, read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed in open council. Okay, thank you. Or as Mayor Rabanovic would say, thank you, Madam Clerk. So that is moved by. Councillor Fenning and Councillor Gordick, all in favor? That is carried, thank you. And one last recommendation. That we do now adjourn to meet again at the call of the mayor. That is moved by everybody. Councillor Gerber, Councillor Gordick, all in favor? Carried. Thank you, everyone, and make sure you have a safe drive home. Good night, everyone.